So in this overview, I'm gonna cover the differences between the generation one virtual machine, or really the format we had before Windows Server 2012 R2, then the new generation two virtual machine that was introduced in 2012 R2. And if you go back to the history, operating systems were not virtualization aware. And so Hyper-V, like other hypervisors, had to present to the operating system a set of hardware that that operating system expected to be there, uh, sometimes emulated hardware. So for example, if we look at a regular generation one virtual machine, if I go and look at the settings, what I can see is we have an IDE controller and that's what we have to boot from. We have to boot from a disk connected to the IDE controller and we can only boot over the network from a legacy network adapter. And this is a BIOS based machine. So if I actually go and log in to this virtual machine, this VM Gen 1, and I fire up device manager, what we see is, we'll see we have that IDE controller. We have things like a PS2 keyboard, there'll be a PS2 mouse. There's floppy disk drives, there's various types of COM and LPT ports. And on the system devices, we see lots and lots of emulated pieces of hardware because the operating system may not be aware of virtualization. So you have to have all of this. Additionally, if I go and look at information about this machine, we can see it's legacy, so a BIOS based machine. Now, if we look at today, operating systems are enlightened. Most of them understand the concept of virtualization. Windows has all the Hyper-V integration services built in, so it directly understands VMBus. It understands the synthetic SCSI controller, uh, the synthetic network adapter. You don't need all that emulated hardware. And so what we now have is this generation two virtual machine. Now this is UEFI based instead of BIOS, which also allows us to do things like enable secure boot. So that secure handoff between the hardware and the operating system itself. But if I look at the add hardware, there's no legacy network adapter. There's no IDE controller. It's actually a much smaller set of hardware because now it can boot off the SCSI controller. It can do a network boot over the synthetic network adapter. You don't have all these legacy pieces of equipment. And so now if I look at that virtual machine and I look at device manager, What we see is there is no PS2 mouse. There is no PS2 keyboard. There is just a synthetic SCSI controller. There's no floppy disk drive. And on the system devices, I have a much smaller set of hardware. So if I jump back again, this is kind of what we had before with the Gen 1. So then Gen 2 has a much smaller set of hardware very much focused on those synthetic devices. Now, because this is UEFI based, this is only gonna be for Windows 8, Windows 2012 and above, because there is no uh, compatibility support module. It cannot pretend it's a BIOS machine. So even Windows 7 would not work in this environment. So it has to be a 64-bit OS, and right now it has to be Windows 8 or Windows 2012 or above. In terms of performance, there isn't a big difference in performance between a generation one and a generation two. In fact, there really isn't any performance difference. Once they're up and running, they're gonna perform the same. There might be a slightly smaller amount of overhead for a gen two because it doesn't have some of that legacy emulated hardware, but it's negligible. A generation two VM will install quicker and it will boot quicker. But really apart from that, there's no compelling reason to try and jump to a generation two. You can't convert a generation one to a generation two virtual machine easily. And this is because really that the UEFI foundation. So if I look at disk manager on a regular BIOS machine, we have this NTFS system partition and then we have the boot partition. On a UEFI machine, it's actually different. We have a number of extra disks. So we have this recovery, we have this I believe it's FAT32, the system partition, and then we have the NTFS system. So you cannot just take, even if the operating system would allow it, 
the disk structure, it would not boot. You can't take a BIOS base. This applies to a physical environment as well. I cannot take a BIOS installed machine and expect it to run in the UEFI mode because the system partition is different. So if you really did want to try and do a conversion, this is where you'd really have to try and do a capture of the operating system from the original BIOS machine and then deploy a new UEFI and then do a restore process. But it's fairly heavy. And again, there really isn't a huge benefit. For future use, if you don't need compatibility with Windows Azure, for example, if you know you don't need to go back to Windows Server 2012, then by all means, and it's a Windows 8 or 2012 or above OS, which is going to be 64-bit only, then by all means use the Generation 2. But otherwise, you should stick to Generation 1. And that concludes this quick overview. Thank you.